Okay, in this presentation we're going to look up Markov chains. Now, so I'm going to sort of break this up into two parts. I'm going to do a definition part question first off. Uh, explain what is meant by the statement that a Markov chain is an irreducible recurrent chain. So essentially what does reducible mean or what is reducibility? A Markov chain is said to be reducible if it is possible with non-zero probability to move from any state in the state space to any other state. Okay. And it is recurrent. Uh, a, a chain is said to be recurrent if starting from any state in the space, the probability of returning to that state is 1. Okay. So, essentially a key thing here, actually, this is, I'm sort of answering the next question, but essentially that is a key thing to look out for is that uh, all of the uh, elements of the transition uh, matrix are non-zero okay so that's the key thing to look out for so what I'm going to do now is actually uh, set up a video here so I'm just gonna actually bring up my video now okay so just a quick switch there okay okay sorry just pick up there so it's consider a Markov chain with three states one two three and transition matrix as follow I'm gonna call this transition matrix P actually I just actually put it in there as P so what we're going to do actually is just to actually when I remove my hand uh, remark that it is all of the rows add up to one and so on also that there are no zeros present okay that helps a lot in sort of that absolutely none of them are zeros that actually uh, shows that like it's possible to go from one state to another and back uh, and so on eventually so if you start off in state two it's ultimately you're likely to end up back in state two at some stage okay so it's irreducible and recurrent okay so the question now is uh find the stationary distribution for this chain okay so what we're going to do here actually i sort of waded straight into it there but what i'm going to do actually is just sort of put a bit more explanation on it first okay so the the essentially what we have to do is solve this equation down below so the stationary distrib distribution equals pi p or p is the transition matrix pi is the set of values that we're looking for equal to uh, pi okay so like i wrote it out like that now just as a remark just for the sake of space i actually wrote this out as it's transpose but actually it should be a, a row vector just like this just to, just that's just to sort of uh, overcome a little challenge or just to make it legible so just that's a sort of little side step so essentially what I'm going to do is multiply out these equations here so I multi essentially matrix multiplication essentially so multiply this row by that column this row by that column and this row by that column okay so essentially pi 1 times 2 fifths plus pi 2 times 1 fifth plus pi 3 times 1 fifth and that would should actually equal to pi one. Okay. So here I have it done out. Okay. So this is just sort of what trolls people sometimes. It is the columns here, the column values. Two fifths plus two fifths plus one fifth equals uh, times pi one times pi two times pi three equals to pi one. Okay. So that's so essentially that's sort of what the set of equations would look like. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, progress this on a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to call the equations A, B, and C. Okay, uh, I've just sort of simplified them a bit. I multiply uh, each term by 5, and I've just simplified them a bit, such that if you, the, the first equation would be 3 pi 1 equals uh, pi 2 plus pi 3, pi 2 equals pi 1 plus pi 3, and 3 pi 3 equals pi 1 plus pi 2. Just as a remark, to help us sort of, we have three equations. Uh, we actually have a fourth one here shortly, but I'm actually just going to rewrite the second one there as pi 2 minus pi 1 equal to pi 3. So I'm going to use that as a substitution later on. Now, necessarily, pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3 must add, also add up to 1. That's important to remember. Okay. So... Uh, let's just use equation A there, okay? Actually, let's just bring it back into... So, 3 pi 1 plus 2 pi 2 plus pi 3. What I'm going to do here is use pi 2 minus pi 1, substitute it in there, which you can see here, okay? Uh, simplify that, okay? 
okay and then I get 3 pi 1 equals pi 2 plus 2 uh, pi 2 plus pi 1 and so essentially what we end up with is 4 pi 2 equals sorry 4 pi 1 it's a little typo there 4 pi 1 equals 2 pi 2 or in other words 2 pi 1 is equal to pi 2 2 that's another um, that's another useful simplification okay now what I'm going to do here is put them into this formula here okay so I have pi 1 okay I have pi 2 is equal to 2 pi 1 okay that's from here that's using equation a and using equation B, we found pi 2 minus pi 1, that was pi 3, uh, pi 2 minus pi 1, and that's all equal to 1, okay? So, essentially what we can do is simplify that. Uh, pi 2 is 2 pi 1, so 2 pi 1 minus pi 1 is pi 1, okay? So we end up with pi 1 plus 2 pi 1 plus pi 1 is equal to 1. Necessarily, pi 1 is equal to 1 quarter. Uh, pi 2 is equal to 2 quarters or 1 half and pi 3 is equal to 1 half. So that is our stationary distribution for this uh, transition matrix and this chain. So that's it. We leave it there. Actually, I'll just go back to the other video very quickly just to sort of go back to the definition. Just I'll pause it there a second. So, yeah, just to go back to the definition, for this example, all of the tra transition probabilities are there. There, it's clearly possible to move from any state to any other state in one step, so the chain is irreducible. And it is a common result that if all finite irreducible Markov chains are recurrent. Great. So that's it. We'll leave it there.